Hi, welcome to a2zknowledge.com. So today we are going to look about what is exception handling in Java. So first of all, we can see what is an exception and why should I have to handle it? Why should I have to handle it? And first we can go ahead with theory part, then we can get into the practical part. A quick short example is there. Okay, so first of all, we can see what is the dictionary meaning of exception is. Exception is an abnormal condition. That is what the dictionary meaning says. So how can I handle this abnormal condition in Java? First of all, what is the abnormal condition is? So, what is an exception handling? So, abnormal condition is what I get an exception, we know, fine. And how can I handle it? And what is exception handling? See, exception handling in Java is one of the powerful mechanism to handle the runtime errors so that the normal flow of application can be maintained. Simply I have to say means, <coughs> excuse me, simply I have to say means, by using exception handling, you can avoid the Termination of the code. Okay, for example, if I have an any exception in middle of my code, then if I'm not handling the exception, then my code will be get terminated immediately. For example, you can see here I have a statement 1 to 10 and I am getting an exception in my fifth statement. So the remaining 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, it won't work, will never work. The code will be get terminated in the statement of 5. You can ask me, see, I am getting an exception in the fifth statement. The remaining can run, right? It won't run. If you have an exception and if you are not handling it, the code will be get terminated wherever it gets an exception. So we are handling this exception. If you handle this, what happens is if you are if you getting an exception in fifth, so return the exception and the starts with the remaining execute execute the remaining statements six, seven, eight, and ten. That's what the exception handling is giving for us. So I'm just avoiding the termination of the code. Now Types of exception. We have checked exception, unchecked exception, and error. Checked exception, for example, you miss some semicolon, open and close bracket. That is called checked exception, which you can find in a compile time. But the exception which you are getting in runtime, okay, some logical uh, e exceptions, okay. So that is called unchecked. Error, which you cannot recover, even though you handle it, you cannot recover. That is called an error. So error is different from the exception. Okay, what are all the uh, keywords that which we use for handling this exception is try, which identifies the exception and catch. So try which identifies the exception and it use the throw keyword and it will throw this to a catch. Catch which handle the exception. Okay, and comes finally. Finally is a block. It's an advanced block which we use in uh, exception handling. It's also an optional one, but if you use it, it is it is very good to use it. Uh, if you include it, it's a very good code if you include it. Finally, is where is, is a block which will be get executed always even if you have an exception or not. So I will I will just show you when I go for a code. And throw and throws. Throw which use it to throw the exception from try to catch. That's what the throw is doing. And throws is different from throw. You need to be very clear about what is throw and throws. The naming is similar but the actual thing is different. So throws is going to act as a uh, spy for the methods. So I'm uh, you, you especially we give throws for the methods. So inside each and every method, instead of writing try catch try catch try catch, I'm just giving this throws in end of my method. That is enough. You don't want to write try block try catch block for each and every method. It is not required by using this throws. We can see. I will explain you detailly when I go for a program part. Okay. Now we can go for an uh, practical part. Okay, I'm just having a code. Okay, fine. So I have written an code with try, catch, and finally. So before that, I will just show you a code. What happens if I am not handle the exception? Okay, so I'm just creating a new class. Just I'm just creating a new class. I'm just putting demo. Okay, inside this demo, I'm creating a main method public. Okay, so I have created a main. So inside this main, I'm just uh, doing, a, I'm declaring a variable int a comma b comma c semicolon. So I'm just giving a value for a as 10 and for b as 0. And now uh, I'm just, what I'm going to do is c equal to a divided by b. Okay, I'm just printing this.
okay i'm just going to print this c okay now after this i'm just writing and one more sop and i'm putting i'm just typing this as rest of the code okay fine now i'm just executing this see you get an exception it says divide zero by error so i'm trying to divide a number by zero and it just throws an exception and i'm not getting this statement rest of the code so the code is got terminated whenever it finds an exception and i'm not handling the exception so to avoid this i want the rest of the code to be get printed but it is not possible if you are not handling the exception so now i am going back for the uh, code which i have handled the exception you can see inside the try block i have written my logic your try inside your try block you have to write your logic in catch so catch block it has some exception name arithmetic exception so you have you have more than 15 plus exception types are there and even custom exception is also possible you can write your own after this catch you just type your exception name what you going to face so my code is full about uh, uh, memory allocation and mathematical functions means you can go for array index out of bound and arithmetic exception see safe and side you have to give this in your catch so i am just given arithmetic exception space e e is the object name for this arithmetic exception not only for arithmetic i am just saying general for exception e is the object so you can give any name there so it is not limited to e you can print even a o or a whatever the character you want you can print you can give then i am just printing that e means it will give some kind of an exception message then i am just going for array index out of bound because i am my logic has arithmetic and uh, array function two things i am doing so i am just going for two catches and at last i have a finally block it says i always execute and then rest of the code so okay i am just executing this code and you can see divide by zero exception has got handled and uh, the i always execute the one which we i have given inside the finally block is also executed and rest of the code see i said finally block will be get executed always even if you handled the exception or not okay what is that scenario use for example i am going for an uh, i am just going for an online transaction fine i am just doing an online transaction in in that time i am just uh, typing some amount for example like i am going for 5000 rupees but my account has only 1000 when i when i start my transaction an error says something um, insufficient balance but the exception is not handled so in my website i am getting this error so immediately i am i am getting a panic means i am thinking like whether my account has got signed out or not if it is not signed out then some hacker can intrude my account because they have written the sign out when i click sign out only it will be happen but my code has got terminated the whatever the code they have written for this online transaction management the code got terminated because of my exception but still my account is live so that i can say still my account is live but if you use this finally block you can write inside finally block you write log out so even if you have an exception or not whatever it is finally block will be get executed always so the finally block will say to the code whether you work fine or not not a my problem i will be executed always so i will give you an example for that see i am just commenting this okay i am just commenting this catch statement okay see here i have just specified some mathematical operation but it is wrong divide by 0 and the respective handler catch is not there i have commented it is not there so in this case what happen is your code will not be get executed it will be get terminated so i will just execute this see your code is got terminated see because the rest of the code is not get printed but you can see the finally block is working even if i handle the exception or not the finally block will be executed always so that is what the advantage of this finally block okay next coming for throw and throws okay see i said the throw and throw is totally different it is not same okay so we can see that example now okay so come back to the example for throw and throws see here i created a method a b and again i am doing divide by 0 and result c and uh, the code will be get terminated but you can see here i have not written any try catch block inside my method instead i have specified throws arithmetic exception 
So that is the use of throws. Through for method, you can specify the exception. If I, if I have more than one exception in my method, then you give comma separated, comma, array index out of bound, file not found, class not found, but through comma separated, you can do this. So now what I have to do is in my main method, you can see I have created, I invoked demo because I, I, it, you can ask me without creating an object, how can you invoke the demo method? It is not required because my method isn't static. So you don't want to create an object. So demo, then here I'm handling it. So when I start my program, the compiler will come here and it will check, okay, demo, then the compiler will go for the invo invoke. So at the time, this throw will intimate to the compiler, this throw will act as a spy. This throws will intimate to the compiler says, the method demo which you are invoking, it has an arithmetic exception. So come along with your handler, it says like that. So this demo, it comes, it, it, it goes to that method through uh, by having this arithmetic exception and it will handle the exception. So your code will not be get terminated. So if you go for advanced coding, you have to code your program like this. Okay, you have, you should not use try catch for each and every method. Simply just specify method and main method, you handle it, that's it. So, and in this common statement, just for your knowledge purpose, I have given, see, you can, you, whenever you go for exception handling, try, throw, catch, but we are in code, we are just giving try and catch, throw, which happen internally. Uh, you don't want to specify explicitly, but if you want to specify explicitly is also possible. Okay. See, just you have to include this line, throw, create an object and pass the exception name. That's it. You throw it, you throw it to the catch. So, okay. So this happens internally. This line has happened internally. It takes care by your Java. You don't want to worry, but if you want to do explicitly externally, you can do this. You can include this line next to the try block. You can include this. So we have seen the total in and out about exception handling, try, uh, throw, catch, finally, and throws. And we have seen the difference between throw and throws also. So thanks for watching A2Z knowledge.com and try to write a custom exception and you have to take some list of exception handlings. You have more than 15 plus exception handlings is there. So thanks for watching A2Z knowledge.com. Subscribe my channel in YouTube, like us on Facebook and please share this with your colleagues and friends.